Do you know who you are? Yeah, you, you right there. When you take off the Louboutins, the Gucci, when you step out of the Tesla, take off the J. Crew pants, the jacket, the skirt, the shirt, the hair, the makeup, the eyelashes, the jewelry, do you actually know who you are? Do you? Could you readily identify yourself in a lineup without all of those things? Most people can't because they've spent too much time trying to be someone or something they were never meant to be. We have to ask ourselves many hard questions in this life, but I would argue the hardest question has already been asked, and that is, what on earth am I here for? What is my purpose? And with the average human lifespan being over 25,000 days, how many of those days are you living on purpose and in purpose? How many people struggle to identify their purpose and truly live it out, all because they haven't taken a real self-inventory? They have no idea who they are, what they believe, where they come from, why they say what they say, why they do what they do, why they respond the way they respond. Instead, all of this just shows up in their life. And often the dreams and goals that they've set out are often left unaccomplished and untouched. In order for you and I to discover our purpose, we must go on a spiritual self-awareness journey. On this journey, we will unearth who we are by literally digging into the core of our very existence. We'll unpack who we are by peeling back the layers, looking at our character traits, our flaws, where we come from, what we believe. Then we have to work on untying ourselves from things and people and ideals that don't line up with our purpose. And in the end, the goal is to end unafraid, unafraid to step into who you are and set those goals and dream those dreams and step into your purpose. All of these steps will help us move from someone that's just existing and being to someone who's intentionally being and doing. One of my favorite preachers, Dr. Jasmine Scurlock, says the first way to do you is to know you. So have you ever seen an archaeologist dig something up from the earth? I mean, literally dig it up, bring it up from the surface. Imagine uprooting something that's been in the same place for thousands of years. Well, if you have, then you see them as they're gently pulling or pushing or tugging and dusting, holding things into place in order to bring the full object up to the surface. And if you watch carefully, it takes precision, it takes time, it takes perseverance, and it takes patience. And when you're looking into who you are, into yourself, you too are gonna need some special tools, you're gonna need to take your time, you're gonna need perseverance, and you're gonna need patience because this will not be an easy task. A lot of what you learn about yourself in this process will make you very uncomfortable. When I started to think about how much of a worrier I am, that made me extremely uncomfortable because I can recall times when I literally made myself physically ill from worry. And then I think about how I often never really want people to experience upset, so I go out of my way doing things and saying things, but often that's at the expense of my own emotions. That actually made me angry because that makes me sound like a people pleaser and that I am not. No matter what you learn about yourself in this process, get ready and be prepared. But try not to dig too fast or too hard because you might end up breaking. But with the right pacing and the right tools, you end up carving out a diamond in the rough in the end, which is you. And everything you learn about yourself in this process will serve as a source of information. It'll help you connect the dots of who you are. And it'll help you truly discover your purpose. So we start with unpacking and peeling back the layers of who we are, right? So you grow up Baptist or atheist or Mormon or a nihilist, whatever. What is it that you actually believe right now? Right now. I grew up in a Christianity-driven household with a good balance of church and the rest of the world. I went to church regularly with my mom and my brother. My dad didn't prefer to go, but that's okay. But on Saturday nights before we went to church, 
My parents threw some of the best spades or bid whist parties you have ever been to, hands down, with dominoes, drinking, cussing, fussing, singing, dancing, <laughs> occasional arguments here and there. But I never felt so steeped into any religion that I couldn't ask questions or challenge my faith. But at the same time, no matter where I was on my journey, I always came back because I was grounded and I was rooted there. And you and I have got to work to discover that. We've got to dig deep into our beliefs and who we actually are because your moral compass guides you. It's how you live your life, it's how you treat people, it's where you go, it's how you achieve the things that you achieve, right? So here I am still unpacking who I am. I'm black, I'm a woman, I'm educated, I'm funny, I'm passionate, I'm motivating, um, I'm compassionate, I'm caring, I'm also anxious, I'm a worrier, sometimes unsure, sometimes a conformist. I'm from Detroit, so that means I have a little bit of thug in me by way of Oak Park. And now I'm a DMV transplant, right? That's a mouthful. And those are just some of the things I learned about myself in this process. And then there's another level of self-awareness, and that is who you are ancestrally, your genealogy, where you come from. And I must admit, for black Americans, this is a little bit difficult. Because unlike many other races and ethnicities that can literally trace their great-great-grandmother back to a small town in Italy or a little village in Ireland, our past is a little bit more convoluted and complicated than that. Our past is wrapped up in the transatlantic slave trade, missing birth certificates, separation of families, lynchings, beatings, killings, oppression, you get the picture. But I can go back as far as the D-Amper Plantation in Birmingham, Alabama, where LMMs Mims and Speed Ream started my family on my mother's side. And then on my father's side, I can go all the way back to Coffeyville, Alabama. Yeah, don't look for it on the map, you won't find it. <laughs> where my Native American and Black American grandparents raised my father and his brother. And no matter how difficult this part of the process is for you, it's important. It is unbelievably critical for you to know where you come from. The stock you come from, the image you were made in, the shoulders that you stand on, those who went before you. You know how empowering that is to help catapult you to your purpose? When I think of the men and women that walked the campus of Howard University before I did, I can't help but to hold my head high and put my shoulders back. Because two years after the Civil War ended, my alma mater was founded as a historically black college and university, right? The audacity of black folks to want to be educated after hundreds of years of being told that they were less than human and subservient. And on this journey, this is what I'm talking about when I say make a, a spiritual connection to who you are ancestrally, your roots. And then I started thinking about all these relationships that I have with people. And this is where you have to work on untying yourself from things and people that don't line up with your purpose. And this is a very difficult part of the task. Too many of us are in some unhealthy relationships, toxic relationships, in the name of progress, in the name of chasing money, in the name of climbing the ladder, in the name of keeping the peace. But part of keeping the peace is actually having peace, right? So you have to work on guarding your energy and your spaces. You have to be careful who you surround yourself with because there are some people in our lives that are sucking the life out of us. They are energy zappers. They are there to take, take, take until you have nothing left to give. And some of us are so wrapped up into negative people, negative things, negative spaces, negative thoughts that we don't know where they begin and where we end. That's how tangled up we are. And if you're like me in this part of the process, I had to increase prayer, yoga, meditation, <laughs> journaling, walking, singing, humming, whatever it is that you need to get through this part of the process because people will not let you let them go. They want to hold on as long as they possibly can.
I heard a quote a while ago that really changed the trajectory of my life. And it said, some of the loudest boos in your life come from the closest seats in the house. And that was critical for me because we have a lot of people around us that are with us, but they're not necessarily for us. And we have to work on identifying that and breaking away and breaking ourselves from those curses, from those chains. And while I'm talking about untying yourself, just going to let you know this does not exclude your family. Some of our families are in some very toxic behavior patterns and cultures. And so you might have to break it to somebody at Thanksgiving. We're not doing this anymore. <laughs> Not one more year, not one more day. Not if I'm coming here. But this is a very important part of the process too because as we are tied so tight to people, we can't step into our God-given purpose and do what we've been called to do. And the last part of this journey is where we are working to end unafraid. Unafraid unafraid to dream those dreams, to set those goals. And that's what brings me here, fear. Fear of the next level, fear of what's coming next. And I must admit, as more doors open, as more opportunities present themselves, I start to struggle with the emotions of doubt, of can you really do this? Are you good enough? Are you professional enough? Are you equipped enough? Who's going to support you? Who's going to look after you? But then I think about all the things I learned about myself in this process while I was unearthing and unpacking and still on time and trying to end unafraid. And I think, well, yes, I have flaws. Sure, I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to mess up. But I'm also young, gifted, and black. And I've been created for a specific purpose. And I plan to live out the rest of these 25,000 days doing what I've been called to do. And now that I know who I am, whose I am, and why I am, I plan to step into truly who I am and live out that purpose. Take a real self-inventory, people, so that you can live out your days on purpose and in purpose. Thank you.